Okay, so we're going to move on to the next presentation I, I am presenting. Can you see the screen? Yes. It's beautiful. Okay. All right, so um, this is a little, uh, obviously, a slightly different perspective here, um, and I'll be talking about um, identifying and targeting pharmacologically some mechanisms that have to do with uh, uh, SARS-2 called infection. Um, so, as you know, our uh, methodological approach in the lab for many years now has been to recognize that the transcriptional state of a cell, which actually identifies its uh, phenotype, um, is implemented by a very a small number of proteins that we call master regulators that are downstream of all the major signals that the cell sees, either from the environment or from endogenous perturbation, including, for instance, what would happen when to a viral infection, uh, or from exogenous perturbation, such as, for instance, signals from the microenvironment or even uh, distal signals. And so that essentially there is a uh, consolidation of all these signaling uh, processes into uh, a barren activation or inactivation of this small number of proteins of master regulators. And then these, in turn, implement the programs uh, either activated uh, here on the right or the press on the left that are necessary for the cell to maintain that, that state. This has been applied to cancer in a variety of different contexts and, and uh, has led to uh, several clinical trials that are now running. Uh, some of them which have already provided uh, some very exciting results. We're about to send a paper out, for instance, on uh, the HVAC6 trials in breast cancer, and uh, um, we already have some responders on the Antinostat trials, uh, all based on this technology. And the goal here is to basically see whether uh, this could be applied to uh, other uh, non cancer related phenotypes. We've already studied uh, both through degenerative, um, diabetes, uh, and many other type of normal phenotypes, including developmental ones. Um, and so this is a new challenge here to see whether we can actually use this approach to make sense of what the virus does to the human cells it infects. Uh, so obviously that cartoon is, is, you know, looks great, but the problem is that how do you actually identify these master regulators? To do that, we have developed a number of algorithms that are now sort of become uh, one of the standards in systems biology for this type of work, including algorithms to reconstruct the regulatory networks of cells in a context-specific way, and then algorithms such as Viper that allow us to take the targets of a particular protein and to use them as a gene reporter assay to measure its activity very accurately. And so we can take a an RNA-seq uh, profile of a cell and transform that RNA-seq profile into a protein activity profile um, that is extremely accurate. It's not only being validated by doing uh, for instance, in combination with, in combination with Chuck Drake by doing uh, antibody-based assays, but also um, has received New York State CLIA certification because of its reproducibility and, and accuracy. Um, so uh, the way we apply this uh, to uh, cancer, but basically it's identical to what we're doing now in viral infecting cells, is to identify the master regulator that is the, the proteins that are most likely to control the transcriptional signature by being either apparently activated or inactivated. So left or right, this is not gene expression, this is protein activity uh, in a particular cell. And then basically asking whether there's a drug that can reverse their activity, essentially shut down all the apparently activated protein and activate all the ones that were inactivated. Um, and this sounds a little crazy because it's hard enough to target one protein, but the reality that this master regulator we've shown uh, work as modules and they work literally as on-off switches. So if you actually have a drug that hits the right entry point, you can turn that switch off uh, very, very effectively. And this has been done, as I said, in many, many different contexts. And so we, uh, this algorithm is called Oncotreat. It's New York Clear certified. It's used in the clinic right now. Uh, in collaboration with uh, pathology and, uh, you know, both Mahesh Mansikhani and uh, Kevin Roth have been instrumental in helping us to develop these as a, as a clinical test. Um, and now um, we're basically remodeling calling VIROTREATS to study essentially drug-mediated reversal of viral infection master regulators. So, uh, so we used, uh, uh, for lack of uh, more uh, recent data, a set of perturbations that were done actually in epithelial uh, adenocarcinoma that is cell Cal3. Uh, using not the COV-2 variant of the virus, but rather the COV, uh, the SARS-CoV virus. And this is data that was published and available. And one nice thing is that they, they have generated 12 hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours profiles in triplicate. And what you see here is the, co the comparison, essentially the, the protein activity changes going from the non-infected cells to the infected cell in those three time points. And they're very, very distinct, very, very specific. And um, as I'll show you next, 
uh, they also are uh, related to activation of very critical pathways that are well established in, in virology. In particular, at 12 hour time point, you can see that there's dramatic uh, increase of V2F targets, U2M checkpoint profile, uh, MIG targets, uh, mTORC signaling, DNA repair, and you can start seeing a little bit of interferon alpha response coming up, but not much of it. Um, however, as you move to the 24 and 48 hours time point, you can see that now uh, either the uh, sort of interferon inflammatory response becomes dominant, uh, and in fact, while you retain uh, a certain uh, amount of cell cycling uh, related programs, so most of the programs that are highly activated include the L6 check stat signaling, inflammatory response, you know, alpha signaling, interferon alpha response, interferon gamma response. So this shows sort of a time-dependent migration in terms of the programs that allow the cell to deal uh, or to respond to the infection and creating an environment that is, pro, uh, that is productive for the viral replication. Um, so this is also um, uh, extremely high activation. You can see here the GFCA plot, 12 hours, 24, and 48 hours, uh, the programs that have to do with uh, replication, interferon gamma response, and IL-6 JAK-STAT-3. For instance, the, the latter is almost inexistent, non-existent at 12 hours and 24 hours, but becomes very, very dominant at 48 hours, and we expect even a later time points. Um, so one thing that was really surprising and that led us to the ability to study the drugs is that we then asked the question whether these programs were actually the same programs that we saw in cancer cells. And so what we asked is whether the most differentially uh, activated master regulators that we see in infected cells versus non-infected were overlapping with the, with the master regulator that we see in lung uh, cancer transformation, that is going from a normal lung epithelial cell to a transformed lung cancer cell. And the re uh, results was quite remarkable because as you can see here, this is a cohort of both squamous and adenocarcinoma. And you can see that a, a vast majority here of the sample, especially at 12 hours and then still a, a remarkable fraction of them uh, has a really high overlap in terms of their master regulators. Uh, the scale, anything that is even remotely uh, pink here, uh, the p-value 10 to the minus 10 or better, and most of them actually are above the 10 to the minus 24 range. Um, and so this is a kind of the overlap of the programs that we see uh, in uh, <coughs> sorry, cancer and uh, uh, infectious diseases, which are consistent with the sort of very rapid transition with the G2, G1 phase to get stuck into the S phase um, and activation of the anamage response to promote uh, essentially a, a transcription of the viral RNA and translation. Um, so what we then did is basically, based on the fact that these programs were somewhat akin to the one we see in cancer, we took about 15,000 uh, gene expression profiles that we had generated from uh, 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 drug perturbations uh, and multiple time points and multiple concentrations in, in about 21 uh, cell lines and asked the question of whether any of these programs show the ability to completely reverse uh, the activity of the mass regulators of COVID, uh, of, sorry, of SARS-CoV uh, infection. And what you see here that um, essentially this is a rack list of the drugs. And you see, person, this is a drug called Selenexor by Cario Farm, um, and this company we're collaborating with. And uh, Selenexor is actually has been shown to have a very potent uh, antiviral uh, effect in terms of, and, and what this shows is that it actually is active against all of the programs that we have identified, including the uh, early uh, time point uh, where it's ranked 15. Um, the, the programs are a little bit more confused because they're essentially transitioning towards an inflammatory state, and so the, the, the rank of the drug goes down a little bit, but then it, it becomes, again, extremely high um, at 48 hours. And you can see how striking the reversal of the master regulators is. So the little red uh, bar here are the positive master regulator, the blue are the uh, repressed ones, and you can see here that essentially uh, the red should be all the way on the right in the infected cells. They're now completely shut down. And on the left, the blue should be all the way to the left and now all the way to the right. And you can see this happens essentially all three time points. Um, we also saw a striking correlation between the activity of the target of the protein, the, the, the protein target of, of the uh, Synexo, which is sporting one, and the actual ability of the drug to uh, invert the, the, the signature, almost uh, perfectly linear, and a striking enrichment and the protein-protein interaction with exporting one, exporting one was also reported as the second best hub uh, by a recent systems biology paper uh, on protein-protein interaction in, in, uh, in, in uh, coronavirus infection. Um, and uh, again, you can see the enrichment of the protein-protein interaction with exporting one 
uh, 12 hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours, uh, it is strikingly rich and particularly uh, in increasing fashion uh, at 24 and, uh, and 48 hours. Um, so these are some of the drugs that we prioritize. As you can see, so Inex was in position 13. Uh, but what was intriguing about this is that many of the drugs that we saw at the very top of the list um, have to do with mechanisms that are well studied in virology. Uh, and so this could hopefully, I mean, I'm not a biologist, so please uh, have pity on me uh, if I say anything stupid, but uh, uh, this is essentially uh, something that we thought would be potentially intriguing. And we would love to be able to extend this by um, including some of the drugs that we didn't screen because they were not uh, related to oncology, uh, but may have significant value in, in, in viral infection. And so this includes, for instance, uh, uh, NFFB inhibitors, uh, uh, proteasome inhibitors, uh, um, uh, uh, bromo domain, and SAT3 and export and one inhibitor, et cetera. So um, I'm going to stop here uh, and take any questions. Obviously, this was a lot of work, very rapidly done by Pascual Alaiz and Mariano Alvarez uh, with uh, enormous contribution from our share resource in terms of generating these 15,000 profiles of drug perturbation. Uh, and uh, those were originally generated for cancer with the support from NCI funding and two of the centers that I uh, uh, am the PI on. I also like to uh, uh, acknowledge Sagi Shapira, who has been instrumental in working with us on this particular uh, line of research. Thank you. So let me see if there are any questions now. I can stop sharing. Talk now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Andrea? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. Okay. That was great, Andrea. Yeah, I just had a question. I know, you know, we worked with you and others in the past have been looking for MYC targeting agents or MYC degrading agents, reversing yep. the MYC expression profile in lung cancer. So was there any overlap with the agents that downregulate MYC? And is that, you think, a key driver of that response? Well, MYC is downstream of several pathways. You know, GSK3 kinase, for instance, is a major regulator of MYC phosphorylation and we can uh, mediate its uh, degradation. And uh, you can see that there were uh, both uh, uh, APAT, uh, PI3 kinase, pathway related uh, drugs, as well as uh, drugs that were hitting the MAP kinases, which are directly upstream of ERK, uh, is another major regulator of, of MYC phosphorylation. So, uh, I, I didn't look specifically for the ones that, we're, that we identified were more related to NMIC and neuroblastoma, uh, but we can definitely look for those. And it would be interesting to see whether isopomifering is one of the drugs that uh, that comes up. Great. Okay. That's exciting. And I see um, Ben Izar is also starting. He's also trying to talk. Ben. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear it. Awesome. Um, thank you, Andrea, for the amazing presentation. Um, we've done in the last few days something similar, and, and reassuringly, um, I think there's a lot of overlap with respect to the pathways. We also looked across 5,000 cancer um, RNA-seq data and uh, found you know, several things that are, that are overlapping. Uh, one, one thing that was sort of um, came out out of our analysis is also that there is a lot of uh, enrichment for epigenetic regulation in the uh, SARS-infected cells. And I saw that in the list of your top 30, uh, there are a lot yeah, of- Yeah, there are bromodomain inhibitors, there are HDAC inhibitors, absolutely. Okay, so are those, are those specific drugs, are those feasible? Is it moving forward clinically or, or do we know anything? Well, many of those, like there's a panobinus that is in the clinics and uh, you know, several of the others are, in, some of them are experimental, but all of the drugs that we screen are either in late stage uh, uh, so experimentation, so they're in phase two or phase three or FDA approved. Uh, so all of them are actually drugs. They're not uh, just uh, two compounds. Awesome, okay, thank you.